Small Groups, it is great to be with you. My name's Lou, if we don't know each other. Um, I'm one of the leaders here at Sunny Hill and I am bringing you your small group content for this evening. Uh, on Sunday, I preached a message entitled Serving Your Sphere. And the idea really is that we should live a life of complete servanthood. Uh, when we talk about spheres of service, we can often get trapped into thinking that we're talking about rotors and, I don't know, pouring teas and coffees. And for sure, that may well be part of what it means to serve the sphere of uh, responsibility that God has assigned to you. Uh, you'll be looking at the passage of 2 Corinthians 10, looking at what it means to serve the sphere. What can we um, hear from God in how we serve? What are the risks of not serving in our spheres? You'll be having some conversations about that. Uh, you'll be talking about things that you, areas it can grow in. I really love it if in this small group, actually, you would spend spend a lot of time talking about your testimonies, talking about what it is that maybe God's spoken in and through you as you have stepped out, as you have decided that actually you are going to take responsibility for the area of service that you find yourselves in. Because we all find ourselves in a sphere of service. That sphere of service, I'm saying sphere of service a lot. It's happening a lot. But the, the sphere of service that you serve um, may well be your family. It may well be your workplace, it may be your colleagues, it may be the mums at the school gates or the students that you sit next to at school or university. These are the people that God has assigned to you, and I use this as a measure, he has measured off to you that you are responsible for and that your life really should exist in a, in a posture of willingness to help, willingness to reach out, willingness to share the good news of the gospel of Jesus with them, willingness to, to disciple them along that journey too. Each one of us have been invited into this journey uh, and God is thankfully, thankfully willing to partner with us in it by giving us his Holy Spirit. And so I would love it this evening if you would have a good conversation, have a good chat, find out exactly what it is that people love to do, how they've heard God, how they've been used by God and what it really looks like when each one of us come together and build something strong because ultimately, Sunny Hill, that is what we're called to do. We're called to join together to build his kingdom, to extend his kingdom. And uh, Dom this week uh, has been away. He's been in York and uh, he sent a little video that he would like you to check out. It's a video of him walking through the walls of York. I didn't realize that York was built inside a wall or at least there are walls everywhere in York. And it gives you an opportunity to see the size and the scale of the walls of York and how that can be a bit of a picture of what it's like for us as a church to stand shoulder to shoulder, to build something significant and strong for the kingdom. Over to Dom, nice to see you. Have a great night. Enjoy small group. This week I have been in York, in the city of York, and it's just an amazing, breathtaking place. Largely because of these amazing walls that completely surround the city, like the whole thing. It's like over two miles long. Um, and these walls have stood for millennia. Literally these walls have been in place that the foundations established since like just after the days of Jesus. So they've been around a long time. But you know, I've just been thinking a lot about these walls as I've been here, just because obviously on Sunday we looked at Nehemiah and you know, the, the profound thing about these walls is obviously the size and the gravitas of them and the fact that like obviously historically they have defended a whole city and withstood um, like the, the warfare against the Danish um, Vikings and stuff like that. Um, but what I love most about these walls is that there's not one stone that has been laid that hasn't had hands on it and what i mean by that is this wall didn't just appear this wall was crafted and shaped and sweated over and bled over by ordinary people like you and me working together to bring protection to the city and you know as we're in a series on dream builders right now a big kind of thrust of this series is all to do with the fact that like these things don't just happen these things don't just appear one day you don't get up out of bed and then all of a sudden have this wall that is surrounding the city as a defense no it requires people who resolve themselves and decide in their heart that we're gonna we're gonna build protection and i love the fact that this took swarms of people communities of people standing shoulder to shoulder right next to each other, laying one brick at a time. And it's just amazing. Just 
look at that. Just look at that. And so as we think about the series Dream Builders, just hold that at the forefront of your mind. That, if you like, things like this, they don't just come up out the ground. They require people to co-labor in community, with energy and with effort to make the dream a reality.